please come down from your meditation. I'm ready. I'm back, me. back okay. from the meditation. Back. <laughs> back here in this other realm. This realm, whatever realm this is. Thanks for being so patient. No problem. And Emma. for taking these questions. Good. You know? Yeah. All right, I have a question, light question. Okay, then I have a light answer. All right, well, oh, okay. all right, then a heavy question. Then. then I have no answer whatsoever. I have a question about lineage and Maharaji. Mm -hmm. So, when I was with reading books about Meher Baba mm -hmm. and going to see Amma and mm -hmm. getting hugs by Amma, mm -hmm. some people mm -hmm. are crying mm -hmm. and they're personally affected and it's their path. Mm -hmm. And when I saw a picture, really a young picture, and I saw Maharaji, mm -hmm. I, I, did, I felt full. Mm -hmm. Do you, why is that? Why do we have connections to specific gurus and different lineages? Mm -hmm. And do you think that you were, he was with you when you were born? Um, he was always here. Yeah. We're the ones who aren't here. You know, those beings are here always. We're the ones who aren't here. Period. They're here always. We just have to find out what that means. And we're all connected to different lineages or different lines of transmission, you know, from life after life. And um, they say that once you, that your guru never, everyone has a guru, and that guru manifests in many different ways for you, life after life after life, and whatever you need in any particular life, that's what you get. So whether a person knows they have a guru or not is irrelevant, you know, it's, it's so bottom line. It's because that's what we needed. Mm -hmm. Is it like yeah. in this time that happened, when, I, when you were born, mm -hmm. when I was specifically born in that specific time. Mm -hmm. It was this lesson of that, inc that was the bait, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what? Uh, well, yeah, it's just, you, we're always getting, once you buy into this, then you, you, when you really buy into it, then you, you have to, all, you only have one option, which is surrender, which in the, you can't do in the first place. Surrender comes from grace. So once you surrender or begin to surrender or understand what surrender is, then you begin to take everything in your life that's there that's not a mistake. Good or bad, painful, pleasant, it's not a mistake. It's there for you to learn or to be affected by and changed by. It's not like learning this way. It's learning by living through it, whatever it is. And ultimately you take that as your guru's prasad his his gift to you, whatever it is. And you try to work with it in the best way that you can, depending on what kind of tools you have available to yourself at any point in your life. But there were people who came to Maharaji who left, didn't feel anything. He's nice, but he's kind of ugly. And I thought, ugly? And I, when I looked at him, I saw all the beauty in the universe is, you know, wrapped up in that blanket. I couldn't understand, but that happened. It wasn't for them, this life. But if he brought them there, he brought them there. Nobody gets there by accident. And it's the same with all the real gurus. They're always here. They see us wherever we are, whatever life we're in, whatever situation we're in. Right. We don't have to see them. We have to live learn how to live a good life, whatever that means to us, and open ourselves to all the different possibilities. But, to, but by the way, to, 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 to think that I can't get it together until I meet my guru, that, that's complete bullshit. Because the guru's always with you. It couldn't be anywhere else, because they're here. We're not here. When we're here, we'll be with them fully. Right now, we're lost in our thoughts, you think you're you who you think you are who you think you are, and I think I'm who I think I'm. So what else is there to say? We're completely fucked. <laughs> if but we for can, now, we work with being open. We work from within right. that, yeah. Right. Because the guru's here. The guru lives as our own true presence within. Who we are, who we really are, is the same as who the guru really is, which is, of course, God, which is, of course, the true self, the true being, our true nature. 
which has got to be already here, otherwise it, it's not true. So it's, it's always here, but we're lost in our stuff. So we always have the possibility of finding ourselves because we're always here. So we work with our lives the way they unfold, and you never know what's going to happen next. So you just try to be as present as you can and follow your heart as much as you can, you know? And it lead, leads us to what we have to do. And, um, That's a good answer. Yeah, and the, the, the joke is that we think we're doing it, you know? And we're not. We just think it looks to us even like we're doing it. But it ain't that way. But it's not an up-level game. It's not, you know, you can't up-level it in your mind. Like, oh, I'm feeling this pain, but I don't really feel the pain. It's really God giving me this pain. No, no, no. You feel the pain. You feel the disappointment. You feel the suffering. You feel the joy. You feel the happiness. The joke is that we think we're responsible for all that. But really, it's our karmas unfolding, and we're being pulled from within. Humans experience being pulled towards God as a pull from within, because that's where it is. So, you know, the less we, the more we turn towards that through practice, day after day, and we train ourselves to release the things that are keeping us caught outside and fascinated by the outside world and all the things we imagine it has to offer us. We release that stuff little by little and we fall into ourselves more and more. And that's, that's where the guru is. Guru, God, and self, not different. But we think we are who we think we are. So what are you gonna do? You gotta, you gotta work, you know, you gotta find your way out of that paper bag, but you can't. You can't think yourself out of a prison that's made of thought. Every thought is the prison. So this isn't about thinking or understanding or learning or anything. It's about training ourselves to keep coming back again and again and again. And then we're home. And that's the guru. That's God. That's, that's our true nature. That's what they say anyway. Well, I'm hoping it's true. <laughs> Sounds good. It feels good. Yeah, so how bad could it be? Did, you know, did, when I think about, uh, when I think about practice, mm -hmm. uh, having a consistent meditation practice, mm -hmm. when I think about or feel mm -hmm. uh, that experience, when I feel I've been in places where I have taken a silent retreat, let's say for 30 days, mm -hmm. And I can feel in the first eight days, I feel crazy mm -hmm. because my thoughts are going like all over the place. And I realize how much of me is dying mm -hmm. because I uh, desperately want to speak and connect and go back and forth. Mm -hmm. But my, to, I have lots of different roles in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm a good son, a bad ex-boyfriend, a... All ex-boyfriends. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's the... <laughs> but, yeah, but, you know, I'm, I'm all these were all sort of, you know, did, did Maharaj ever talk about, or when you, about the different roles that we experience? You know, like, <clears throat> here we are, we're talking, I'm getting advice from you, we're together. You're not getting advice. Well, I mean, we're, we're, well, God forbid I should give advice. But it's... it's Maybe on my side, you know, like the way it looks. We're sharing our space here. Right, sharing our space. Yeah. Um, Maharaj said, just remember Ram. He said, you know, he never, he never encouraged us to do any particular so-called spiritual practice for the sake of our own enlightenment. Okay. Never. He said, love everyone, serve everyone, remember God. Remember God means like doing, repeating the names of Ram, Ram, Ram Nam, names of God. That's what he said over and over again. He never said, think about yourself. In fact, when I was gonna kill myself, I was having a nervous breakdown, I was, he said, what are you gonna do, jump in the river? Ah. He laughed, he said, you know, you can't die. Worldly people don't die. And he said, only Jesus died the real death. What? He said, because he never thought of himself. Thoughts of me never arose 
in Jesus. And he was finished with that, so they didn't even arise. He didn't think, I'm Jesus, I'm going to save these people. No, it was irrelevant. He was one with God, is one with God, so thoughts of me never arose. So that's the real death. That's what Maharaji said, when thoughts of yourself no longer arise. But we have so many thoughts. And when you go to a retreat like that, that's the first thing you notice. Those, those weren't more thoughts than usual. Those, you're just noticing. Them more. You're just noticing, because those are happening all the time. So that's why it's training. You can't do this all in one shot. You have to slowly, little by little, cultivate the, to, the ability to remember what, what you're doing more often. And, and release that stuff. But he never, you know, coming and going, it, it was irrelevant to him. Whether anybody, he's, his mantra was go away. That's what he said, my mantra's go, go away. So he didn't need you to be there. He was beyond all that. He sees you everywhere. Everywhere you are, he's there. And so there's nowhere for us to go except to be more here and to transcend the programs that are running inside of us about who we think we are and we're worth this, we're not worth this, we're right. good at this, we're bad at this, we're, all that stuff. You know, all those roles, it's just thoughts. No more, no less. Or emotional feelings, which are in, just bigger, slower, fatter thoughts, you know? Thoughts on steroids, that's all. So. You, you can't push those things away, you can't kill them, you can't shoot them when they go by. You can only notice them and let go. That's why chanting is such a great practice. That's what I do. Because when I'm chanting, I'm turned towards the repetition of the name, the sound of the name, the, the doing of it. Anytime I'm not paying attention, it's very obvious. I just come back. The more, the more you're paying attention, the more obvious it is when you're not. But there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of dedication that's behind that, you know, and that dedication is to try to keep myself alive, you know, and pointed in the right direction. And that's the regular practice to do that. It's not about how do I feel today when I'm chanting. Well, that's a great meditation. I'm so right, calm. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's just like I'm so zen out about Yo, it. Yo, this is right. so great. I'm so empty. Right. Oh, I'm so right. empty. Really? Oh, right. Yeah, right. Prove it, you know. Yeah, no way. So it's not about that. It's about the doing of it, which is planting seeds in your mind stream that will grow and bring fruit at the right time. You gotta keep planting those seeds because when you're, you're planting the most purest, most wholesome seeds that you could plant for yourself, you're not out robbing banks, you're not out killing and shooting and maiming, you're simply sitting there watching your mind and releasing. And that's the best thing you could do for yourself and anyone else at any time. Because out of that comes a real connection with people, with other people, with, with our suffering and with their suffering. It's what connects us on the real level, not, to, not, not think, well, we're all one, we're all one, no. It's something to be known, not to be thought about. It's a big difference. So saith the Lord. <laughs> Good. What's your name? Stefano. Stefano? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You from the city? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Very yeah. good. I love I, I love it. This is like a karma yoga. Uh-huh. It's you know, it's some people think living in Manhattan is crazy. You know, they, they think it's like I could visit, but I could never live here. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. to me the oh God, just the stuff that you see on the subway and sure. the people and the it's a it's an opportunity to like okay like how much do i really want to focus mm -hmm. how much do i really want to be here mm -hmm. how much do i really want to be present there's so much distraction sure but well, there's a lot of practices you can do when you walk around you could do this metta practice loving kindness practice when you walk down the street everyone you see you wish them well everyone or whoever it is, whatever you think about that person, whether it's some guy, nasty gang guy, or some drunk bum in the street, some, you wish them well. You just wish them well. You see how you feel after a few blocks of that. You'll be 20 feet off the ground because you're not thinking about yourself again. You're 
cultivating, offering other people, may you be happy, may you be safe, may everything be work for you, may you have a good life, you know? And you're not thinking about you. You're making the offering, just like if you were doing puja or doing a prayer, you're making an offering. This is also an offering, because every one of those beings is just as much God as we are. And so to judge them or put them in a box is a lack of understanding. So that's one of the reasons New York is so good, because you want to kill half the people half the time. Yeah. And that, that's good to see, our, our true nature. <laughs> our true unnature. It's in real time. Yeah. It's in yeah. real time. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do the meta practice. Yeah, it's a good practice. You know Sharon Salzberg? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. go sit with her. She's the best. Yeah, and if you can do that retreat, I don't know when they're doing that. Maybe they've already done it. She's in Massachusetts, right? She's in New York a lot, York? and I think she goes to Tibet House every week when she's here wow. on Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday. She's at Tibet House uh, every Tuesday that she's in New York. So definitely she's the, she's the greatest. We're going to be at Kripalu together in a couple of three weeks. Oh. I love Kripalu. It's, it's, it'll be good to check her out, though. Yeah, I've never I, I know who she is, but I've never <clears throat> never taken one of her, her courses and stuff. She's great. Fantastic. You know? Okay. Good. I have an offering for you. You do. I have so many of these. You do? So, I, uh, you can you imagine how many I have? I'm, that's what I'm saying. You probably <laughs> have so many. You just do the next one. You can give it away. Okay, Usually, you know? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll sit here with it today. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for talking, Katie. Yeah. Take care. You too.